We have some decisions to make. Yeah, well, I'm kind of curious. I'm kind of curious what this world map is like. Because... I'm guessing... I'm guessing that this is kind of just here to be here kind of thing. Like, I, I can't imagine there's much to actually do on the world map. It's just kind of here because... A, they made it, so might as well show it off, and B, uh, to give you an opportunity to grind. It is really cool to see, like, what the world has become, though. All the destruction and stuff, you can, like, firsthand see it now. Because before, we saw all these cutscenes of things happening, but you couldn't really, like, see it for ourselves. That's not as big as it seemed like it was in the cutscene. I feel like there's not going to be much to do. Like, there's not going to be post-game stuff to do. There might be, though. It's just, given how much this game has already had in it, and also the state of Disc 2, <laughs> I just kind of doubt there's going to be anything to do. actually enter this? I can't land. I don't remember how to land, but I'm pretty sure it's X. And it's not letting me land. Yo, we should check out the Yggdrasil. It's been a minute. Deus integrated with Zahar and awoke, but we found out Deus is in the center of the giant structure created out of the fallen Merkava. The only way we can think to destroy Deus is to penetrate into there and make our way to the center. That structure used to be Merkava itself, but we must assume that inside has changed significantly. We don't know what dangers await inside of there. Please be very careful. Yeah, thanks, Sigurd. Let me take care of it. I will destroy Deus, even if it costs me everything I have. Bay, are you sure about this? Art? I know what you must be thinking now. If you destroy Deus, the proliferation of the nanomachines that are out to turn this planet itself into a weapon will stop. But if you end up losing Ellie, who is united with Deus for that very purpose, then what good will it be? But... That's right, Faye. She's our friend who's been through a lot with us, too. I think that saving a dear friend is just as important as protecting our planet or saving the world. Uh, I mean, uh... <laughs> What better reason is there to fight? If you can't even save your friends, then how could you save the world? Uh, I mean, that's, that's fair. Don't you agree? Yeah, Sig's right. Don't you ever give up, Faye, no matter what. You're the only one who can release Ellie from Deus' spell. But we'll give you as much backup as we can, so... Thanks a lot, Bart, Sigurd. I won't give up. You volunteered to fight for the young master and the rest of us, so it's our turn to fight for you and Ellie. Let's go, Faye, to gain true freedom. That was kind of cool. I think that's like an optional scene. 
So obviously, I didn't, I didn't have to come in here. God, I've been standing here for such a long time. Was I of any help to you? Mm, I don't know. Oh, yeah? Well, there are a lot of people who get lost around here, you know? Ha! Huh. Now, where was I? It appears the final hour is approaching. If need be, this mason will also take up arms and come to your aid. Mason's the best. It was a long journey, but what we did was not in vain. Let's prove it. Beyond my ability to understand, but regardless, I'm counting on you. No one else can do this. Where's, uh... You're the only ones who can save us. We're counting on you. Young master, you better not die. Promise me. Of course, I'm not going to die. Quit saying such weird stuff. I wonder if this only happens in parts of the party. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. You'll make it back. When you come back, I'm going to... Well, I just thought maybe I could be closer to you, you know? Hey, whoa, quit it. Do you know what you're saying? Nah, just kidding. Young master, you're all panicked. Funny, I don't see Choo Choo anywhere. Where'd she go off to? She's right here. Oh, I can't pick her. I think I might as well bring Emeralda since she has magic. Even though magic hasn't been very good recently. Ah, there you go. holding a note. Read it. Free memo. Wow. There are three types of guns that are standard equipment for you. Handgun, ether gun, big gun. The only gun that can be re-equipped is the handgun. You can power up guns by upgrading their respective ammo or bullets. It's just a tutorial on Billy's gun for some reason. Wait, can we see all of our sweet gears in the hangar? Nice. Look at that. All the Omni gears. God. Rico's is freaking crazy looking. <laughs> She's just standing there.
she's just permanently hanging out in the hangar now. That is her new home. Alright, let me run to the bathroom real quick and then we'll decide what we're doing. Alright. Hey, thank you, Gray, by the way, for the 32. Thank you very much. Okay. So, we have a little bit of time left for Xeno Gears before we move on to New Threat. Um, obviously, we don't have enough time to go do the final battle, knowing this game. That'll be hours. So, um, I guess we just kind of explore a bit and see if there is anything. Um, on the world map that we can find. Somewhere, somewhere that I was gonna go. I forget where that was now. Can I not go like? So why is... Oh, is he, like, permanently boosted because of his, uh... Speed boots or whatever? I thought that was... That was outside the gear, though. Maybe a little overpowered. <laughs> hmm, that's interesting. You would you would think that boost mode would be like a different thing though. I was gonna go to like Yeah, I mean we get boost mode without having to spend the fuel, although honestly fuel hasn't been a thing in a while. Fuel hasn't been a thing since the Miang fight. Look, it's our village. Kisla. Blue Crystal. Imp. Imperial M4. Code clear. Max check. 30 count. Program engaged. The amount paid is 150. Is this like way back in the day we had that thing where you could turn these in for money? Is this just the way to continue doing that? Even though no one's here anymore? I guess that's what it is. How's it going, Gibson? You finished Vincent's Gambit. Nice. We 
We can do the battle arena. Look who's here. Is that a jukebox? <laughs> what is that? Oh, you finished the uh, got it. Nice. You should try it. It's fun. Quote unquote fun. Don't have the corresponding disc. Wow. The continent of Ignis and its countries, the Empire of Kislev and the Kingdom of Ave, these all no longer exist. Our world lost such names on that day. The survivors have gathered in the snowfield far to the south. It's the last stand of the living. It is really wild that, like, so much of the game was about these kingdoms and their battles and politics and Bart becoming the leader and, like, Nissan and their religious leaders and, like, all that's just completely gone. Just, like, there is no... All that stuff was moot in the end. Oh, I want to talk. Destruction was poured out onto our entire world. Does he have a microphone? <laughs> Death poured down on all the living. It was fate, unavoidable fate. Brought this from the empty remains of the bar in the Imperial Capital, Nortoon. The outside was damaged, so I had to change it. It was hard to get rid of the elegant old grain book. But anyway, don't you think the new fa faux marble design is kind of groovy? Now, if only I had an M-Disc. You can listen to M-Discs with this, but I gave my M-Disc to the girlies in the old Imperial Capital. It was a valuable premium disc refined with ether logic too, if only I had known. Nothing learned, nothing gained. Ask and you shall receive, perhaps. Anyway, battler, what do you need to know about the battling contest? Welcome to the Imperial Capital's battling arena. Now let's do it. I don't know who I'm fighting, but whatever. <laughs> What's a game mode? The Imperial Games Battling Contest event has been changed to a regular sport. There are now two modes. Special Mode 1 is the same as ordinary matches, except for... Woo-hoo-hoo! Well, see for yourself. It's faster to try it out than hear me explain it. Special Mode 2 differs from ordinary matches in that upon winning a bout, you receive battle points, which you can collect in exchange for prizes. What the heck is one, then? Bonus battling. Practice tutorial exit. <laughs> computer versus computer. Oh man, we have to pick our fighter? We could be Choo Choo? Bro, you get to pick like any gear from the whole freaking game. Even the ones we fought before. Bro, we literally get to pick like any gear in the entire game. Death? Merman? How many are there? <laughs> Holy cow. Freaking Super Smash Bros. Ultimate level character roster.
Remember how to play. Hey. Bro, I have infinite energy. Like, Xenogears doesn't have energy. I could just spam. <laughs> Cedo Gears is busted. You're supposed to have an energy meter so that you can't just spam. But Zero Gears doesn't get one. for dominance. So what about Special Battle 2? Select your gear to pilot. Well, obviously I'm going to pick Xeno Gears. I'm playing for Cash prizes. Yeah, like it's insane how much. Like I didn't think. I didn't think it could be like legitimately any gear in the whole game. What? Why was that so quick? by triangle or jump. Bro, what was that? <laughs> this is so cheap. work like is it square and X that do the combos now what your repair costs minus 30 battle points one plus 175 special bonus plus 330 75 total. What can I get? Rare item exchange. The M disc. Bay Junior doll. <laughs> Billy Junior doll. Lifestone. Death Blower 3, Speed Shoes. X Charger. I want the M Disc. said I had 175. How much are like the speed shoes? what it's saying here. 
Is total BP the amount it costs? Does it cost 30,000? Why does it say current BP 4,500? I don't have 4,500. I have 175. Used. Samson's hair. This one just says current BP. I guess the game is keeping track of both your current BP and your cumulative BP and it deducts both when you buy stuff? That can't be right. This time, choose better. I wonder if I get more if I fight a harder fight, because obviously this would take forever. I only get a hundred per fight. I have a feeling that I unlocked a, a stronger opponent. I like guess probably gonna say level three now or level two. Just level one. Maybe it goes down? I don't know. Hold on. Give me one second. Maybe I'll try the level zero fight and see if it's harder or easier. So, yeah, I thought that fighting level one, like, I thought level zero was maybe, like, easy and then level one was, like, normal and then maybe beating normal would unlock hard. Maybe it's the other way around? Or maybe these are the only things I can fight, but in which case, how in the world do you get enough battle points to, uh, to buy anything? Maybe if I use a, a weaker gear? Maybe if I use Welltall, I get more points or something? This is an interesting... level easy. Okay, so that was... I think less points. 145 I think I got more last time. Try well tall. Also, I don't know if this like super long intro before every fight is really necessary. <laughs> like I liked it during the story, but nice just to kind of fight now. Well, I guess you can with the special mode one, but then you don't get any points. Okay, yeah, so... On Welltall, X is just a combo move. But on... 
on uh, Xeno Gear, it was shot. It's not due to any obvious flaw. I lost battle points. I feel like you'd be here for quite a while battling. If you wanted to actually buy anything. And there doesn't seem to be anything super unique to buy there either, except the... Maybe the minifigures. Alright, so what else? The bottom... The bottom was the... base, right? Or is this the base? This is something else. Can I not land? Anima Relic 2. Please tell me this is just like a spot that I can grind. Thank you. Kind of looking that way. Looking like it's just a spot to grind. Yeah, it seems like Square has a a desire to take away world map music on subsequent discs for some reason. <laughs> it's nice that they just have the same world map music in this game all the way through. Alright, so these guys are at least semi-strong, so they should give me some, like, XP. so fast. Actually insane. Let's realize we're level 69. Nice. Yeah, so I mean, this is just kind of looking like a grind spot. Maybe this is like the way to the core here. Maybe there's something. There. Whoa, that's new.
guy is fast and he hurts. You know who else hurts though? Freaking Satan. <laughs> Laying the smack down. Yeah, so is there going to be anything in here, or is it just going to be the remains of the relic? So yeah, I would imagine this dungeon is probably just here for grinding. Which, thank God, because they haven't had anything like that in a very long time. We haven't needed it, though. There was the, the couple bosses that were, like, gimmicky and difficult. Like, uh, the Deus Machine and Miang. But pretty much everything we fought today was just, like, attack it and win. Like, there is really no reason to even grind or get more death blows or anything. It was just, like, attack and win. So, today was very much just a, a visual novel section. Hopefully the finale has a good combination of the really fun boss fights that we fought two weeks ago and the uh, visual novel we played today for, uh, for an epic finale. Because now I wouldn't mind having a super difficult crazy final boss because I actually have the ability to go grind and buy new things and stuff. If that id fight had been, like, super difficult, it would have been like, wow, really? I've sat through, like, ten hours of story, and now I'm stuck on this boss, and I can't get stronger. But now that the world map's opened up again, they could make a really difficult final boss. Or it could just be like the other bosses, and you could focus more on the story. I'd be fine either way, but... want to hear my take on today's section at the end? You mean like after the after the final boss or like the end of the play session? Oh, I kind of already said everything I wanted to say. I don't really know what else to say. Kind of, kind of talked about it as it happened. Um, I mean, overall, it was amazing. Like, the game continues to to shock me with like how many twists and turns they had planned from the very beginning. They don't feel forced at all. They feel like things that have been earned all the way through the game. And it's just honestly incredible. And on top of that, that phase section was by far my favorite part of the game. I mean, I, I would have expected the story to either fall off or get boring by this point, given that it's been a visual novel for, like, three straight weeks. But it only gets better. It only gets only gets more and more interesting and, and 
doesn't feel like it's stringing us along or wasting our time. It continues to hit us with revelation after revelation that feels like earned and things that we actually wanted to know. How did I end up in the ship? That was weird. Okay, and this is the boss, right? So yeah, I think that's everything. There's... There's a thing over here, but I don't know how to... I don't know how to get it. Would I consider a second playthrough? Maybe. Um, I mean, yes, definitely at some point. This is definitely a story that if you play it again, you're getting a lot more out of it. Um, I do feel like the combat won't really... I won't really have much to like, because... I didn't really know what I was doing with the combat up until, like, pretty much the end of the, of disc one. And even then, I still don't really understand everything there is to understand about the combat. But I still got through the whole game with not very much issue. So I feel like a second playthrough, I'm probably just going to smash the combat. Like, if I knew what I was doing with the death blows, the combat would be like a joke. So I don't think I'd get much out of it, combat-wise, the second playthrough, unless I did, like, a challenge run or something. Um, but definitely for the story, just playing through again, knowing things, would be awesome. This would probably be one of the better games you could play a second time through. I have kind of a, a list in my head of like games that are really great to play a second time through, knowing what you know from the first playthrough, and I feel like this is up there with one of the best. There's just so many like revelations that Knowing what you know, every every dialogue sequence would feel different. And all those flashbacks and stuff that we didn't have any understanding of back then would mean so much more now. Okay, here we go. So, basically you can just redo these two dungeons. Got it. Okay. That's cool. Why is it so hard to land this thing? <laughs> it's like you have to be like straight or something to land. Yeah, we had a... There were, like, several people that were, like, straight up losing their mind because I wasn't doing every death blow and, like, Googling how to do the death blows so I could have every awesome death blow throughout the game. And I can say without... without a... slight bit of uncertainty that that would have completely ruined my playthrough had I just googled or asked chat to tell me exactly what the death blows were. Like, I only... I died like twice to the Deus dude and like once to like two other bosses and that's it. Which to me is bad. Like, the game should be harder than that. Being a JRPG and having all these things like fuel and uh, like the different gears and all the equipment that like helps you with certain element things and stuff. 
Um, like, I should die way more than that. So that I can actually take advantage of all the mechanisms the game has, you know? The fact that I only died that many times, I would call this an easy game. Um, maybe not, like, maybe easy is a bit of an exaggeration, because some of the gimmicky bosses do take some, like, thought, and especially as a kid, I could see you completely getting, like, destroyed by that day as boss and never figuring it out. So maybe easy isn't the right term, but, like, if I had gone out of my way to learn the death blows, it would have been, like, a joke. Like, I would not have enjoyed the combat half as much as I did had I done that. Apparently you can't... Here. So... Very glad I did not listen to that. And that's something where now... That I'm... What is that? It's a ghost of... Years past. Wind Sarah. Oh, it's one of the Saros. That's cool. Um, now that I'm through the game, you know, once I beat the final boss, I can uh, very easily look up all the death blows and enjoy them for what they are. And then I'll get the best of both worlds. I'll get to play the game on a difficulty curve that makes sense, and I'll get to see all the cool death blows. If I had just listened to those people and looked it up right away, I would have been like, oh, these look cool, and then it would have ruined my whole playthrough. What the... That's why I tell people, like, that's kind of the way the, the Let's Plays go. It's it's better for everyone if I just play it at my own pace, at my own, you know, do it my own way. It's going to be better for everyone. But people just want, just want the Let's Play to be theirs for some reason. Even though they can play it themselves. Ow. That hurt. Guys, don't screw around. I don't know. I I've talked about it many times. I don't really want to go into it, but... The, the point of a Let's Play is to watch someone else play it, not have them play it the way you're playing it. Otherwise, just play it yourself. Don't you want to see how someone else interacts with the game? Or you just want to see ten different people play it the same exact way you did? What's the point of that? <laughs> just go play it and record it and then watch yourself play it over and over. It's got a... something. Angel damage down. I feel like that's probably going to be useful, given what we're about to fight. What is this? Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, maybe we'll do a 100% Xenogears playthrough someday. 
now that I've played it casually, that would be a fun thing to do. That would not be a fun thing to do on my first playthrough. It would just be a look at the walkthrough and, you know. But now that I've played through it, maybe we can do that sometime and see everything. Thanks for visiting. You're looking mighty healthy. I want to help you more, but this body can't survive unless it breathes the air here. Looks like I'm just about ready to meet my maker. Huh. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. Oh, Tora. <laughs> this guy gives me Bugenhagen vibes. Don't worry, I'll stop my moaning. Besides, I have a nice present for you. Manly Mantle Goddess Robe. I feel like a lot of this stuff was supposed to be like post-game quests to get. But they didn't have time, so you just kind of talk to the person and get it. Whoa! That is incredible for her. Like, incredible. Exactly what she wants. Defense up when ally KO'd. Man, do I want to take off this dark armor? Because the golden vest has 30 defense, but I feel like the ether defense is kind of more important. that's it. That's everywhere on the map that we can go. You can tell me whatever it is you want to tell me once I'm done with the game. I am not done with the game yet. a hammer. What in the... Did you see how quickly Satan's bar filled up? <laughs> Look at his bar. <laughs> it's like instant. Oh my god. Perfect timing. We searched everywhere on the world map. The only place left to go is the final frontier. So we should be in perfect position to finish next week. Land the ship. Land. Wait, do I have to like stop? Maybe that's what it is. I gotta stop turning around. Uh, you know what? I don't remember exactly which door is the save point, so I'll just save out here instead. I should probably... Probably fuel my... Thing first.
This guy was just regular stuff, right? Forget who did the gear stuff. Oh, I remember. Hey, buddy! Sixty-four hours in. We're finally ready to take on the final battle. And it feels longer. <laughs> I mean, the Let's Plays always feel longer because we only play them once a week. So it, it feels like it's been months, but it's actually only been 64 hours. But... Even taking away the whole Let's Play thing, it feels like it's been longer than 64 hours. This game has felt like an 80 hour experience. I mean, to be fair, I guess with the deaths, that adds a little bit of time, but not that much time. But yeah. What a game, man. What a massive game. I can't believe it's on two discs. With all the cutscenes and stuff too, like I can't believe this is on two discs. The amount of hours isn't crazy in itself, but the density of story in these hours kinda is. I would say it real like so, like, Final Fantasy VII, you know, as kids, took us 60-ish hours to get through. But a lot of that was, like, long dungeons and fights and screwing around at the Gold Saucer and... Like, I feel like so much of this 64 hours was text. And so much of this 64 hours was, like going straight through the story, not messing around with side stuff. So this was 64 hours of, like, meaningful, story-driven content. Now, to be fair, it's definitely... It's definitely unbalanced, the amount of dialogue versus combat, mostly because of Disc 2. But it's still insane that it's 64 hours of, like, going forward content. I mean, there was almost no padding. Like, zero padding. I can't think of a single... Maybe like that one dungeon that was like really confusing. <laughs> and it took me like an hour to get through. But I think that was my fault, not the dungeon's fault. But none of it felt like padding. None of it felt like, oh... We can't move along in the story until we get this item, and this item just happens to be in some random dungeon that's just kind of there because it's a dungeon. Like, every section had a purpose and a reason to it. I guess you could look at the jail. Yeah, I mean, like, I think the problem with the jail... So, like, the jail had Rico, so it wasn't a complete waste of time. Like, it did introduce to us one of the main characters. And it had, like, some meaningful dialogue with Faye, and some meaningful dialogue with Satan. But most of the events that happened at the jail stayed in the jail and didn't really, like, matter in the end. And Hammer, too. 
but a lot of the other events that happened were kind of just in the jail and then that was it. But I don't know. The moments with Faye, the moments with Satan, and then Rico and Hammer. Those were all meaningful things that ended up mattering in the end, so... Maybe it was a little bit of padding, but not, like... Not horrible. Not like I was dying during it. <laughs> you know, like... And, and even, even introducing the mech combat made that section really fun and interesting. And then the, the sewer section was also... I said it before, that, that Faye moment is definitely my favorite part in the game. Yeah, yeah, there was the section with uh, Groff and Ellie too. Like, all the, all the ending stuff in the jail was all meaningful, like the them trying to save the jail and then Ellie uh, made her big switch there. Like, that was all. But I think what people are talking about is, like, the, the beginning of the jail section. Like, up to when they got out of jail. And yeah, that was definitely longer than it needed to be. Um, but definitely not as bad as some other games padding. I, I think that that was reasonable. Reasonably done. And there was some, like, stakes of what's going to happen during that part. Um, what happened to Bart? What happened to Sig? You know, that was all, like, there were some stakes. It wasn't just a complete, like, boring waste of time. Like, we did kind of have this overarching, like, what happened to everyone? We need to get out so we can find out. And then meeting Rico, meeting Hammer... The sewer dungeon, the mech fights. We met Wise Man there too. So. That section definitely felt more like padding than any other part in the game, but I still don't think it was really that bad. Maybe just the beginning. Running around trying to figure out how to start the mech battles. Yeah, that, that's it's just crazy. Crazy this team was able to create this much on two discs, no less. And, this, and remember, too, this is early PS1, right? I think we talked about that before. Because this was in development while 7 was in development. So this isn't even, like, years down the road. They didn't have a, a mastery of the PS1 architecture yet, like Final Fantasy 8 or 9. Wild. Alright, well, it's looking like next week is going to be the big week. I'm glad we were able to find a really nice stopping point, because uh, I was kind of afraid when we were in the, the scene with it, I was like, oh man, are we going to have to like... Like, what, what, are we going to have to stop at some, like, really weird time? But it worked out perfect. We're right before the final dungeon, so that'll be next week. We're going to move on to New Threat, but before we do that, we got to say goodbye to YouTube. So, YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Let's play Xeno Gears. What a blessing this game has been, man. I, I, I will never forget this playthrough. And I'm so glad that so many people wanted to see this playthrough and so many people asked for this playthrough. Um... And I couldn't be more, that, that's a weird way to say it, but I couldn't be more understanding as to why. <laughs> like, I completely understand why so many people uh, have such a connection to this game and, and wanted to uh, wanted to see it as an official Let's Play because it is one of the most important games, I think, for old PS1 RPGs. Like, like I said, the, the Let's Play series isn't, just PS1 RPGs, 
but a lot of it is in that kind of era of RPGs is kind of where we've done most of the Let's Plays. Um, and I don't think you can have a Let's Play series about PS1 RPGs without playing this. I think this is one of the most important, paramount PS1 RPGs. So, I for one am very glad that we were able to do this. So, next week, we'll see what happens. Thanks again for watching Let's Play Xenogears, and we'll see you in the next episodes. Peace.